In this short video, I wanted to talk about the Autodesk Fusion 360 timeline and some of its uses. The timeline is a valuable tool for both beginners and experienced users. The timeline is a recording of all the sketches and features you've done in the history of the part in chronological order, from the beginning to the end. You can use the recorder controls to go to the beginning, go to the end, or if you want to play each individual step in order automatically. This is a great way to learn how somebody modeled a particular part. You could also step back and forth using the small arrows. Now if you do not want to work with the timeline, you can turn it off. This is done using the gear at the end and pick Do Not Capture Design History. Be warned, it will get rid of your timeline up to that point and move all your features to the browser. To get the timeline back, which will not re reconstruct the timeline as it was, but you go to the right click on the top level and say Capture Design History. Notice all the features are combined in one solid base feature. Let's take a look how we can make the timeline work for us. In this particular model, there's supposed to be a fillet on each side of the, in, the cam slot on each of the six locations. Well, I don't want to put fillets on 12 places, so what I'm going to do is drag my end apart marker back ahead of the pattern. Notice it's on the back side. I must put the fillets on the original. I'm going to roll it around to make it easier. And I'm going to do a fillet on these two edges. Make it two millimeters and say OK. I'm now going to drag the end apart marker to the end again and I'm going to edit the pattern. Right click and edit feature. Holding down my control key I'm going to pick on the fillet in the browser or in the timeline I'm sorry and it adds it to the set three selected and say OK. Now you can see that the fillet's been added to every one of the slots. Another method of doing this, instead of dragging in a part marker back, is to do the following. First of all, find your pattern, then find the original, there it is over there, rotate it around again, put the fillet in, and notice my timeline as at the end. So I add my fillet this time at the end of the timeline. It was two again. Now, there's my fillet. There's the pattern. Since the fillet is not a dependent feature, I can left click and drag it back to the beginning of that pattern and then simply edit the feature and do the same process over again. Pick the fillet and say OK. So if the feature is not dependent, you can drag it back down the timeline. Let's talk about a little bit about dependency in the timeline. I've opened up a new model, which is a section of a bottle. I'll turn off the analysis just so you can see it. It's a holiday bottle. Now, notice the fillet. The fillet was put in before the shell. So the fillet can actually make an internal round corner. What if I put the fillet after the shell? You see it did not pick it up on the inside edges. It is not a dependent feature, so I can move it around. Now notice the cutout in the center, which is a revolve cut. If I bring that back past the shell, it's going to give me an error because that violates the shell command. So I'll just undo that. It doesn't, it's not dependent, but it does make an error. Let's talk about the sketch. The sketch for that revolve cut in the center is not dependent on anything. It can go all the way back to the beginning if I want to and I can group my sketches together. It's up to you. As long as it's not dependent, you can move it around the timeline. Now I'm back in my gear and I want to take this chamfer. You see it is hooked to that bore. So I cannot drag that any further back than the actual bore 
extrusion, which is right there. So that is my limit of dependency that I can't go past in history because the bore supports that chamfer. With a little bit of practice, you can make the timeline work for you by ordering your sketches and features in a logical fashion. Thanks for watching.